Welcome back to my channel. This is Lori at Lori R Creations. Today I'm doing a Dollar Tree DIY. I'm making this rustic look wrought iron wall mirror. Now, after watching my videos on making wall decorations out of the Dollar Tree garden fencing, I thought I'd try my hand at making one that would give the look of wrought iron, yet fit in well with the farmhouse design style in my home. I feel I've successfully completed what I set out to do, and I'm really excited to share this project with you guys. For the project I used, two sections of the Dollar Tree plastic garden fencing, some white chalk paint and some hot red chalk paint, six plastic spoons. Now, Note here that it's better to try to match the color of the spoon to the color of your final project, and you'll understand why when you get towards the end of the project. And then also the round mirror. Mine measured about seven inches across, and I bought it at a craft store for, I think it was a dollar. If not, it was under a dollar. Some hot glue. Mostly glue gun. Scissors, paint brushes, and garden shears are also going to be needed. Okay, so let's get going. In this image, you're going to see yellow dotted lines. These are the cut lines. So I cut where you see the lines with my scissors and garden shears, but I did not cut where you see the pink X's. You'll understand why in a moment. Now I made six of these pieces that you see on the right at the bottom of the screen. Following the dotted lines, I used my scissors and garden shears to cut out this shape as well, so I cut six of these out. This is using that bottom part that was cut off underneath the yellow line. Now, are you wondering that we didn't cut where the X's were? Well, it's because we needed this straight piece from that area. So now I painted uh, the fronts of all the pieces white. And I didn't try to cover every bit of the surface, and I didn't do a second coat either. I wanted to allow some of the original gray surface to show through and help give it kind of a worn piece, or worn look to the piece. And then I let everything dry. And then I took the mirror and I traced the shape onto two pieces of cardboard. I cut out both of them, trimming one of those pieces of cardboard just a hair shorter than the other. Next, I evenly spaced out the larger pieces along, uh, wrong side up along the top of the larger cardboard piece so that the ends, the curled ends where the curly cues were, touched. Then I glued the stems of the pieces to the cardboard and then I glued the curly ends together. This is how it looks at, at this point. Now, this is the bigger piece of cardboard that's on the front. It's important that the bigger piece is on the front. It'll help hide everything in the back. I then glued the half curly pieces that I cut directly over the larger pieces curly edges. It's as seen in the middle picture here. Now here's the part where I used that odd straight piece. I attached each end of the middle of both of the curly sections with this straight piece. It kind of adds a, a stability to the piece and it actually kind of connects everything and makes the decorations of the front of it look a little nicer. So this is how it looks once those pieces were attached. I then added the smaller cardboard circle to the back. So here's another layer of stability that we're adding to this piece. Now using my garden shears, because I couldn't break the spoons very straight, I cut off the heads of the six plastic spoons and then glued them to the bottom of the straight pieces that I had just added to help hide that connection point of the curled ends. Now you have to flip it over and do them upside down. So if you see on the last picture there, they're upside down glued on. Then I dry brushed some of the dark gray chalk paint lightly over some of the raised areas on the whole entire piece. Um, it gave the piece a more rustic and metallic look. 
I also did some of the edges. I don't know if you could see in the right, the picture on the right, you could see some of the edges were grayed a little bit as well. So this is how it looks at this point. This is right side up and then upside down. Next, I added my hanger, which was made up of a piece of jute that I knotted at one end and a cardboard square. Now both were attached with hot glue. The cardboard square helps to give the jute a little more strength to handle the weight of the mirror. Um, make sure that you put plenty of glue on that cardboard so that it really sticks to the round piece of cardboard. And then I glued the mirror to the front of the cardboard circle and I was done. I love how it looks and I have it now hanging in my guest bedroom for my guests to see their sunshiny faces every morning when they wake up. Now I also want to mention that if you feel the need, you have to finish off that edge of the mirror, the, um, um, the whole circle. Uh, I also bought some modeling clay and I was going to make a rope using the modeling clay to circle and frame out the mirror. Um, and then I was going to glue it on and then when it hardened I was going to just paint it the same way I painted the mirror with the white and then the gray. Um, just know that if you do this though it will add some extra weight to the wall mirror so you may have to add a different hanger to handle that extra weight. And there you have it. That's how I made my rustic looking wrought iron wall mirror. I hope this encourages you, inspires you to give this project a try. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoy my DIY videos, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much and have a great day.